This change of government gives Australia an opportunity to reset its relationship with key neighbours and allies. And the Pacific region is likely to welcome Labor's climate policy, although the Albanese government can expect pressure to increase its commitments there. Dr Tess newton Kane is project leader of the Griffith Asia Institute's Pacific Hub and joins me now. Dr newton Kane, thank you. And firstly, how do you expect this election result is being received by our Pacific neighbours? Good afternoon, Gemma. Well, we've already had some responses from the region. Uh, we've seen tweets and other messages of congratulation from the leaders of Fiji, uh, Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands, which is possibly the one that's uh, maybe most interesting given what's happened recently. So uh, the, the leaders have already made a point of contacting uh, Prime Minister Albanese and congratulating him on his win. Uh, the climate change position that you've mentioned has already been referenced. Uh, particularly by Prime Minister Frank Bainim Rama in Fiji. And we've also, on that, we've also heard from former president of Kiribati, Anote Tong, who is a member of the Pacific Elders Voice. And he has already flagged, again, what you've referenced, the idea, this idea that whilst the shift between what we had previously and what we have now is certainly welcome, as far as some of the key voices in the Pacific are concerned, there's still some way to go. Yeah, now, the new PM has flown out of the country just hours ago to attend the Quad meeting. The main objective is to address this increasingly assertive China in the region. How closely will this meeting be watched by our Pacific neighbours? I think there will be a couple of things come out of the Quad meeting that will be of significance for the Pacific. Um, we know that one of the things that certainly President Biden is looking forward to hearing about is the change in position on climate, that that is something that, that we expect to be welcomed at the Quad. And we would hope to hear something poss possibly coming out of this meeting as to how the Quad Climate Change Working Group is going to take forward um, some initiatives now that, that things are slightly more aligned than maybe they were previously. We also should hope to hear more about um, in continuing work by the Quad in terms of health security, including in, uh, continuing with work for vaccinations against COVID-19 in the region. Some countries are, are very, you know, very well um, equipped and well resourced and have done great in terms of their vaccination, but other countries, Papua New Guinea, for example, still lagging behind. I think the other thing that we were expecting to hear um, that we heard about in the media this morning is um, work around or uh, an announcement around um, increased surveillance in relation to illegal fishing in the region. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something that we need to know a bit more about and that Pacific leaders and Pacific analysts will be wanting to think about quite carefully um, there is certainly a sense that there are already mechanisms within the region that can address that issue and that maybe what is wanted from partners is supporting what, what's already in place rather than creating new initiatives. Um, certainly surveillance is one part of the puzzle, but in, ter in terms of actually keeping the fish in the water or keeping the uh, resources and the revenue streams in the region, um, surveillance without a supplement or surveillance without further support for enforcement is is only half of the game. Mm -hmm. As to climate policy, um, and as you said there, Fiji and Kiribati welcoming uh, the shift, but you know also noting it, it's not going to quite go far enough for their liking. In what form do you think pressure from the Pacific for the new government to go further will come? Well, as we know, there will be a meeting of the Pacific Island Forum leaders. Um, we've yet to know exactly when that will be. The current thinking is that it will be in early July and Mr Albanese will will travel to that meeting. He's already indicated that it's, intention, it's his intention to be at that meeting. And that will be the first opportunity for the regional leadership to meet. And I think it will be made clear to Mr Albanese, as it's been made clear to other Australian leaders, just how important this issue is for the Pacific. We do have a number of um, civil society groups that we expect to be, will expect to be very vocal on this issue. Uh, the Pacific Elders Voice is one. 
Uh, the Pacific Council of Churches is another. You know, they, they all have well-established positions on what is expected. So I think that will be the first um, the first time that the leadership comes together and that will be a key issue for them. They'll be wanting to hear more from Mr Albanese as to what his um, his position is on that and what ambition he can 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 um, sign up for. And they'll also be wanting to look to what they can take to COP27 and whether to what extent Australia can be more, uh, you know, a better part of that team than might have been the case in previous years. Dr Tess newton Kane, project leader of the Griffith Asia Institute's Pacific Hub, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Gemma.